I'm Dave Henning, executive coach with the John Maxwell team, and it's podcast day, and we are excited to have with us our very special guest, Diane Zittick with uh, ClientGiants.com. Diane is literally an expert on Facebook, and uh, so we're very glad to have you with us, Diane. Welcome. Hey, Dave. Great to be here with you. So I've got a lot of questions to ask. Let me get started here. So how does a business owner, small business owner, entrepreneur, how do they know if they're ready to start using uh, Facebook and to get more, to run ads, uh, to get more leads, to get more clients? What, uh, what are your thoughts on that? How do you think that should look for someone who's just questioning? You know, as you know, a lot of business owners aren't really comfortable or familiar with, with how Facebook works. So what do you recommend? Right. Well, you know, I hear that a lot. A lot of times people aren't sure if Facebook is right for them and if they should start working with it. So there are a couple of things that you should really think about as an entrepreneur or business owner um, before you get going. So I always ask clients, like I'll do discovery calls with them and I'll say, you know, uh, to assess where they are, like, do you, do you know your numbers right now? Because you really have to understand um, in your business, what are your numbers? What, what are you, you know, obviously they know what they're selling. If they're selling a product or service, you've got to understand um, what does it cost you right now to acquire a customer? That's a big one. And a lot of times I am shocked when I ask business owners, and even if they've been in business for a long time, maybe they're doing direct mail. And they're just throwing money in direct mail, a couple thousand dollars a month. Oh, we do Val packs or something, or mm -hmm. some type of direct mail. And I said, well, you know, what's your return on that? What's your ROI? And they're like, well, we don't know. Sometimes we get an increase of sales. Okay, what kind of increase? What is your number? They don't know, and they certainly don't know what it costs them to acquire that customer. Right. That is a really cool thing about Facebook. Um, is that you can get to the point where you know exactly what it costs. Every time you get a lead, make a sale, you can track these things in Facebook. So it's really quite remarkable. So that's, that's one thing. The other thing that they should know number wise is the lifetime value of their customer. LTV. Because, exactly. See, if you know, if you're, let's say if you have a business that has a really, um, a value ladder in place that, that you already have like low ticket items. Maybe, maybe if you're a dentist, for example, you have some kind of a free cleaning for example, and then you, when per, a person gets in, maybe they also then sell braces or you can get teeth whitening or, you know, specials on getting crowns or maybe full dentures. That's all part of your value ladder. So the first, you know, kind of deal that you might make might be this small offer of come in and get a, a discounted cleaning. Mm -hmm. That's a really good thing to have. If you know your lifetime value for a customer, if you have a Again, dental practice, you may know over the value of the, the life of them that they may be, you know, five ten thousand dollars $10,000. If you've been in business for a long time, you'll know this. So you can afford to spend a lot more on the front in order to acquire that customer because it's, it's something that can benefit you later. Now, if, you're, if you have a business where you're just selling maybe, I don't know, some e-commerce product or something and there's not a lot of margin in it, then you've got to think about, okay, what can I sell them later? Even if it's not like necessarily a ladder, but there's other products that you could sell. Then you have a good idea of, you know, what it's going to cost you, what you're willing to spend. Those are kind of the teeter totter of it. You need to understand, you know, if it's more later that you can earn, then you're willing to spend more upfront. So that's another really important part of that. Um, you made a very valid point about, what I call old school 20th century marketing, which mm -hmm. involves what we call interruption marketing rather than permission marketing. For mm -hmm. example, I've, I've owned several businesses, a couple of franchises over the years and uh, in a variety of uh, niches. And uh, yeah, you're right. So uh, I used uh, Valpac, I used direct, direct mail, coupons, uh, television, radio, magazines, uh, uh, the high school yearbook cover, <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> all kinds of crazy stuff. And you throw all this advertising against the wall and you hope something sticks because right. a, a lot of this was totally unmeasurable 
for uh, for uh, a number of years. Uh, I actually was in the radio business and uh, sold radio advertising. It was kind of like a a, a joke. Hey, you want to buy some air? <laughs> so uh, totally. Uh, well, there were unique techniques where you could kind of sort of measure the results and mm -hmm. and but you made a very valid point also about about lifetime value of a customer or a client right. Uh, right. in that in that that's something that every business owner really really needs to identify and know so that they're not really uh, discouraged by what's happening with with their low priced entry level products. Does that make sense? Exactly. Yes, absolutely. And the other thing too that is a really important part is a, a business needs to understand that they're ready to handle more. Because if you get a really good campaign going, <laughs> you've yeah. seen the funny commercials where someone like, you know, and this doesn't happen in reality and you know, flip a switch, start a website, and then you're bombarded with business. <laughs> right. There's a lot going on behind the scenes to make that happen. Right. But Nonetheless, a person in a business needs to be able to handle more. So do you have, okay, let's say, um, all right, we're going to get, we're going to set up this up for you. We're going to start these Facebook ads where we created the funnels, we created everything. And all of a sudden you start getting business. Do you have someone in place answering the phone? Let's say if you're generating phone calls that can do it properly, has a good closing ratio, knows how to talk to, you have to have all that stuff in place and be ready and if you don't, don't start running ads on any platform because you're, you know, if you've hired someone good or you're doing it yourself and you have a good result, then you're throwing it away. So you need to, that's the final part of the, you know, how do you know if you're ready? You need to be ready to handle more, more business. Yeah, exactly. So <laughs> you actually have to expect results. Yes. You're going to run yes. ads and you have a, you know, if you have a, a line of customers, uh, in line for your hot dog stand, for example. Right. You, you better, better have, have hot, hot dog dogs. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Okay. So, uh, so having said that, you also made something uh, a very good comment about the fact that all of this uh, new media is totally trackable. You can actually mm -hmm. see your results uh, by the number, so to speak. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah, it's really good. So in Facebook, um, one of the things we use is, is called the power editor. A lot of people, when they just start using Facebook, if they're teaching themselves, they might be familiar with ads manager. Power, power editor is kind of like the next level for people that um, manage multiple campaigns or manage uh, multiple clients. So when you use that, um, Facebook also has a very cool way of tracking everything by way of pixels. So a pixel, for those who aren't familiar, is just a little piece of code that you uh, is generated by Facebook, and then you can place it on your website or on your e-commerce site. And what that does is it makes your website talk to Facebook. So when people visit there, then Facebook knows. They kind of know a lot, it's kind of like Google. They, they know everything about everyone, um, right. which is great for advertisers, but maybe not so great if you're a privacy advocate. Um, however, so the pixel once they're placed properly and that's a whole other, oh my goodness, a lot of people get hung up with that if they're trying to learn it themselves. But once those are placed properly, you can have uh, events triggered so that if let's say you're just doing a simple, let's just say a lead generation campaign, um, a person will visit your website and you're offering some kind of a lead magnet, maybe to watch a video or get download the ebook, et cetera. They put their email address in the pixel on that page will talk back to Facebook and say, oh, you had a visitor and this visitor's IP address is, is this. Uh, then when they become a lead, um, you know, let's say 10 people visited your site and one person opted in, that'd be like a 10% uh, opt-in rate. Mm -hmm. And so you would know, okay, I spent this much money in clicks to get to that one lead and I know that my lead costs Let's say if you were, you know, your lead cost, um, I don't know, $3.78. Um, you would actually see that number that I got a lead for $3.78. And then if you, if they went on to purchase something, you could have a purchase pixel and you would know like if they bought some, uh, you know, bigger ebook, maybe you're selling something for $47, you would actually know that the value of your conversion 
that's what it caught that's what money you produce and you would know your lead so you you can get down granularly to everything like exactly what things cost across the board and you can know your exact ROI so it's really really pretty cool so one of my challenges with my own business is the fact that I've been a a, a do it yourself guy DIY guy for many years and uh, I've had employees I've met I've had a lot of employees I've had a few employees I prefer to have no employees. Yeah. Uh, however, as a do-it-yourself guy, you know, I want to go on Facebook and I really don't know how it works or, 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 or what to do. So what's, what's some of the, some of the big uh, drawbacks or challenges when someone goes on the Facebook, Oh, look, I can buy ads. And what, what's, what's some of the issues that they're going to run into? Well, a lot of times people start on Facebook and, and, and Facebook will, invite you to do that and they want to make it look like oh look how simple this is <laughs> just do this um, a lot of things that they promote is um, boosting posts so people they have a little web page or they have a, a group or something like that um, within their their Facebook group you it'll encourage you to boost your posts now I will say that boost post has gotten better over the last year because they're giving you more options in right. in that um, ability but the fact of the matter is unless you have already gone and understood everything about your the, the person or the group that you're trying to target meaning um, their avatar so we use the word avatar in marketing meaning who is your ideal client who is what is everything about them um, what are what are their age and gender those are the easy ones um, what television shows do they watch? What organizations are they part of? What is their religious affiliation? What, um, what uh, things do they read? What do they do in their spare time? Um, you, could, you really should spend a, a significant amount of time really deeping, uh, going into a deep dive with this so that you understand who will respond to the offers that you make. And then once you do that within Facebook, the targeting is just it, it's it's off the chain i mean you can target so many different things um a lot of people don't know that you can target people that are about to get married or about to have a birthday um wow. you can target people who make a certain amount of money you can target people who have a a certain income level um now you say well how do they know my income level on the facebook i never wrote that <laughs> they have what they do is they can they collaborate with other data sources, the big data, and they hook up every, their algorithm is pretty darn slick. So you can actually go in and you can target these folks. So the, the name of the game is to understand who would respond best to buying your product or service. Mm -hmm. And then drill down as far as you can to your kind of master avatar um, of, you know, th this person doesn't exist in reality in any one person, but it's, it comes as close as you can to having all of the aspects of your, your ideal person who would just, you know, be absolutely crazy for what you have to offer. And then you can um, start creating your targeting. And to answer your question, it does get, it gets complex. I mean, you, one little thing on or off can make the difference between a, a very insanely uh, successful campaign and one that's just not not making it and you're kind of scratching your head boy saying you know hey i i'm i'm doing everything that i think is right but i'm not getting any i'm not you know my bait's not working my my lead magnet is not getting any opt-ins um and it could be just needing to fine tune some of these uh um areas within your targeting yeah so uh it, it kind of goes back to if you just boost the post and oh uh, they'll take five dollars, ten dollars for a day, for a week, or whatever it mm -hmm. says as they press that button to boost the post. If you're just uh, going after all your your friends or or your friends' friends, mm -hmm. uh, that's not necessarily the person that come walks in the door of your store and uh, buys your stuff. So, exactly. <laughs> so, uh, and, but here's the here's the cool thing, as I understand, and please correct me if I'm wrong. When it's done right, uh, Facebook advertising can be some of the most economical advertising in the entire world. And of course, they've got a reach, depending on if you're a local business or a national or international business, 
the reach is incredible and there and and then you choose the frequency that's i'm going back to old radio terms um you know how frequency being how often are you going to target these people and the reach being how how far out or how specific am i am i getting so uh but then you also said another very important component and that was um a uh a funnel or a or a capture page where whether or not somebody buys your stuff immediately you're capturing their email address and hopefully their first name and you're growing your list so what can somebody who wants to advertise on Facebook what can they do with that list with that information how do you use a list oh it's it's the most important thing so once you build a list you're building a business asset and so if you are just throwing traffic to your website, which a lot of people that don't know, um, don't know better, I guess for lack of a better way of saying, do that. And they're spend money on traffic, but they don't actually collect anything because once you have people, you know, it's well known that people don't normally buy on the first go around. You have to have a couple of different exposures again and again and make more offers. So once you build that list, you get, you get someone to opt in. Um, to your list and you have an autoresponder in the back end um, and you're sending them daily or weekly messages saying, Hey, you know, uh, I saw you taking a look at this um, bathing suit and uh, you, you know, you didn't buy it or whatever, you know, whatever the messaging is, you, you, you get the point. You, you're re-exposing them to what they've already looked at and that's what you want to do um, so that they can, they can have another opportunity to buy. If you're not building a list, um, you, you're just you're wasting your money. You're wasting traffic, um, and and no no business person really should be um, thinking about doing Facebook ads unless they're already thinking about that full funnel. This is a, another thing I see people do. They think oh, I can just run ads, uh, run the ad. Let's make an ad and run it. Well, no, there are big other components. You have to first you know understand who you're talking to. Obviously, you're going to get the messaging right. You want to speak into to their language, to the way they speak. Let's say if you're speaking, maybe your um, community is uh, veterans. Um, veterans and what they might be excited about may be completely different than another uh, type of maybe millennials. They're going to be totally different ways of speaking to these two types of people. So when you're doing that, um, you you reach in and you speak their language, you get something, an offer in front of them that they're excited about, and then what happens after they click the ad? It's not over. They have to go somewhere. That has to be created. That has to be thought out. What is the next thing they're going to be presented with? So it's not just the Facebook ad. It's what happens after they click your ad. That's just the beginning. You know, the Facebook ad is you got the targeting, right? You have uh, 1.7 billion people a month, billion with a B on Facebook. So you're in front of them. You got your message in front of them. They click, and then what? Because Facebook is giving you that, but they're not giving you the other piece, which is the whole funnel, the whole where are they going after that? How does your website look? How does your capture page look? What are you sending them to? Um, so if that's not all in place, that's another mistake that I see people making or they want to do ads, but they're not ready because they don't have these funnels together and, and you need to have that in place. Yeah. So I, I remember when the internet was invented by a very famous person many years ago. <laughs> and <laughs> and at, back then it was like, Hey, you got to have a website. The website was the new version of your yellow pages listing basically I, you remember phone books they they make a good doorstop now because they're okay. almost kind of uh, totally obsolete. But back then it was all about, I got to build a website. I got to have a presence. It's got to have my contact information. I got to tell all about myself, where I came from. I got to have pictures and, uh, and maybe even a, a moving video thing. But uh, here's a, a, a very important issue with websites. You send somebody off a Facebook ad to your website and what are they doing? They're wandering around, they're looking around, they're researching exactly. you because we're living in the age of researching stuff. What, who, what do we do? We go to uh, Google. We search on Google for everything. We check it out. We check reviews. 
et cetera, et cetera. So having said that, uh, I've heard some pretty significant people say that, that, uh, that websites are, you know, practically dead. <laughs> if not dead, yeah. exactly. He said websites are dead. That's his big headline. <laughs> <laughs> they, I mean, my, my feeling about it right now is they have a lot of uses, but as far as driving traffic, when you're, when we're specifically talking about Facebook ads, you don't want to send someone to a website. You want to send them to a page where they have one option and that is to do what you want them to do or, or they may choose not to do it. They may choose to click away. However, if you have your pixel installed, then you're going to retarget them, which we do on Facebook as well. But if you send a person who clicks on an ad to your website, they probably have all kinds of things that they could click on. Oh, about us. Oh, learn here. Oh, download this. Oh, what are people saying? They're, they're off on 50 rabbit trails at that point. You lost them. You know, you, you lost them. No, you want to, to basically spoon feed, hold their hand to say, you know, you, you clicked on here to get this, whatever the, this is, the very next page is here. This is, and you're going to get it right now by taking this action, one action they're able to take. You've got to take them right down the line in order to make them take the actions that you want to take them. No, no distractions. It's not a good idea. Um, now the website itself, I'm not saying people shouldn't have websites. They, they can, but they're for this purpose. Um, you, you definitely want to handhold them all the way down the trail of where you want to take them. Right. Uh, exactly. So, um, uh, tell people, believe it or not, a lot of people don't know what in the world an autoresponder is. What, what does that mean? So an autoresponder is a software that a person can build their list into. So we talk about a list. Basically, a list means a, a list of people with, at the most fundamental level, is at least going to have their email address and their name. It can have a lot more items, but that is called your list. So let's say if I have a list of, um, a thousand people that I've collected over time that have uh, expressed an interest in my products or have bought my products. Those could be potentially two separate lists. Um, but the autoresponder is the software that will respond to your people automatically, hence the word autoresponder. So you have uh, the ability to send out an email saying, let's say a person opted in to your list you send them a welcome email saying, welcome to my don't, you know, welcome to uh, widgets.com. And we're glad to have you. And we want to give you the special offer today of 10% 10, 10 off because you're a new visitor. Um, much love, Dave, right? Now you wouldn't say that, but I'm just kidding. Um, oh, sure I the would. Next, <laughs> the next day, the next day, the next, you know, two, three days, you send them another note saying, you know, I want to tell you a little bit about how we started widgets.com. It was, you know, back in 1984 and we just start, you know, whatever you want to say, tell them a story about something and then say, oh, by the way, we're having, you can give them a call to action to do something else. So mm -hmm. you're not actually sitting at your keyboard banging this out. You've already created maybe a 50 series, series of emails that's going to drip on them. They call them a drip campaign also that is already in place, and if you've done it right, and it's what's called evergreen, meaning that it's not saying, um, you know, today's Tuesday, November, whatever, um, or Merry Christmas, because you don't know when that person's going to be getting it. They could be getting it, um, you know, some, in the middle of the summer, and they're like, hey, what's this Merry Christmas? You know, it doesn't make sense. If you make it evergreen, that means whenever they receive it, it will be fine. Uh, and you can sit back and just work on collecting these leads and then have your autoresponder doing the follow-up and the selling and saying, you know, if you have a question, reach out to our customer service, et cetera. And that's way you can um, automate that process. It's for automation. Okay, great. So that makes a whole lot of sense. So let me kind of uh, maybe explain it to our viewers in this way. Some people remember Henry Ford and Henry Ford went to, when he was building his very first model T actually went to a, uh, a, a meat market and saw how they were automating the cutting of their products, their meat. And he went back and created automation 
um, which is like having uh, a lot of employees that are that are more of a system and a process, and in this case, software. And so that's the whole idea: is is if someone can automate more of their business, so they can focus on running their business, uh, build it once, <laughs> and and rinse and repeat basically is is the the phrase Absolutely. we use. Yes. So if they can build out the these emails that are all different and unique, and also uh, there's it's a big deal nowadays to you know people you know, the famous phrase people buy from people they know like and trust. Yes. How do you build the trust? Uh, yes. You can build it through this automation, these autoresponders, and you see the commercials for some of them, like the Constant Contacts, and several different ones that are very good, mm -hmm. and some that are questionable <laughs> but pretty much they're they're all good they all do what they're supposed to do um, and then uh, another thing that I wanted to touch on with Facebook advertising what well, you were talking about Diana an entry-level kind of a service a low-end we, we talk about dentists giving a, a discounted cleaning with x-rays for example mm -hmm. and the way to build credibility and authority is uh, would be to give something away. So, so with that, I, I'm, I'm going to offer this uh, commercial interruption for this concept here, Legendary Marketer. It's a great book by my, my good friend, uh, uh, David, uh, oh, what's his name? David oh, Sharp. Oh, come on. <laughs> David Sharp, yeah. <laughs> David Sharp, How to Build a Digital Marketing Business and Earn Unlimited in Income from Anywhere in the World. So if you'll stay tuned to the end of the podcast, I'll give you a link where you can get this book for free just pay shipping. So that's my, that's, <laughs> that's my ethical bribe right there to stay with us for the whole thing. But there's a good example of uh, an entry level way of connecting with people with something of value. And uh, so how do you incorporate that with your clients into what you do for them with, with Facebook? Um, with offering something of value? Right. To, well, one of the things that I do is um, I will give someone an entry level of uh, a discovery call uh, where I can actually, you know, say if they're thinking about doing Facebook ads or they're going, they want to take it to the next level and get more traffic and create sales or what have you. Um, I can kind of help them with the process of understanding, you know, their business and if they're ready and say, here's, here's what I see for you. Like wh what's worked in the past for you. That's another thing that I always ask people is, a really good way to get started with Facebook ads if you haven't used any type of advertising like that before is just say what has worked for you offline like it, it, uh, maybe you haven't done anything online yet if you have an offer that is working for you offline you could take that offer online you don't really have to reinvent the wheel you know so um, that's and and the other thing back to lists if a person uh, a business has a list already Let's say you have, you know, again, like 1,000, 1,500 people or something. A lot of people don't know. You can actually take that email list and upload it into Facebook and create an audience in Facebook that you can retarget. So really? if you have, um, I recently had done this with a, a pizza place that I did a campaign for. They had an existing, they had about oh, 2,500 emails. And so what we were able to do, we just uploaded. Now, it's not going to be an exact match, um, but because so many people are on Facebook, it actually probably does about maybe 80%, 70, 78, 80%, where it will match those emails, create your audience, and then you can start doing ads to them and saying, like in the case of the pizza place, um, another thing with the targeting you started to mention was you can pinpoint targeting. I, if I have a pizza parlor that, um, is in a certain zip code or it has an address, I could say, let me target only to the people that are in a five mile radius of my business. And then you have your list and you could say something like, you know, come in on Tuesday night for 25% off. Mm -hmm. You don't need to reinvent too many things when you're just starting. You don't have to think, oh, wow, what kind of offer am I going to, maybe you already have offers and you just need to take them from being non-digital to being digital and it could work just fine. Um, for a larger business that might be multi-country or in all of the United States or Canada, you know, wherever, you can take that same concept of 
let's say you have a, a buyer's list of people who have bought from you. Well, within that buyer's list, those people who bought, they're going to have certain characteristics and traits that made me made them want to buy your product. So you can kind of know that they all have that in common. And when you put that into Facebook, you can actually create what's called a lookalike audience. So you upload your thing, you create an audience, you know that about all these people that they already like your product or service. You can have Facebook's algorithm actually create a lookalike audience, they call it, and it will massively expand your list and then you can market to those people. So it's really pretty cool that, that it does that. I mean, there's so many things that you can do with Facebook if you know what you're doing. Um, that for me, you know, getting back to your original question, I need to, to be with someone on the phone or uh, we usually do a join me or a Zoom and, and see, you know, what's working for them now? What are they doing? What are they up to? What kind of offer do they have? And then because of my experience, I can say, oh, oh, this is going to be great for Facebook because I know who we can target. I know what kind of offers we can build out um, or what we can use that they already have. And let's say, let's, you know, take this approach. And it works really, really well. That's fantastic. So um, let me ask you this. Um, what are some of the common mistakes that people seem to make when they're, they're running Facebook ads? Well, the big one that I see a lot is people spending way more money than they need to in order to just find out if it works. Uh, mm -hmm. You don't need to spend a lot of money on Facebook ads. You should always, in my opinion, you should always test low. So if you have done your homework and you, and you, you know, believe that um, this offer is going to resonate with this uh, targeting, because you've done your avatar and you set that all up. That doesn't mean that you sit there and put a $5,000 budget on it and let it run. You never should do that. I don't care what kind of homework you did. You need to test it low first. Uh, test it, you know, five, 10, $15 and see because of the tracking that we already discussed about how I can see what my ROI is going to be. I can see what kind of the lead cost I can see, you know, what's happening. Once you start to see what results that you're getting, then and only then is when you should scale. So if you know that it's running and you say, hey, we have a winner here, this is great, then you start putting some money into your ad spend. Um, and if you're you know, putting a dollar in ad spend and getting a dollar 20 back, um, you'd do that all day if you were in the casino, right? You, you, <laughs> how many dollars can I put in there? Because you're making money. Um, and obviously you want it to be a lot more than that is, is when it becomes super exciting. I mean, if you can put in, you know, a dollar and get $3 back, well, Hey, let's go. You know, it's wonderful. So the phrase for that is scaling up. You're, yes, scaling you're, up. You're scaling your, so that's really cool that for five or $10, you can really find out whether this ad or that ad with this picture or this copy is exactly is yeah. working or, or not. So mm -hmm. did you want to uh, make any kind of a comment about, I know that you're a Facebook expert. First of all, if people want to find out more or, or sign up for your free discovery call, where would you like them to go? Would you like to want to give us your website once again? Sure. Absolutely. Thanks, Dave. Um, it is, uh, Client Giants with an S. I always want to enunciate a little better with an S. So ClientGiants.com. And on there I have, um, you know, just some basic information. I, I don't really go crazy about my website because I really just like to talk to people and understand their business. But I have testimonials on there and there's a contact me. Um, anyone can send an appointment. So that's where you can find me. Fantastic. I hope uh, some of our viewers will take advantage of that because I'll tell you what, there are a lot of people out there claim to be certified by Google AdWords or by Facebook, and that doesn't necessarily, <laughs> they have the depth of expertise that my friend Diane has. And uh, sad to say, it, but it's true that you really have to be careful uh, when you listen to everybody's pitch about how good they are on taking your money and running the Facebook ads. So just, or, so I would like to ask though, Diane, uh, speaking of which, I kind of just mentioned it. What, how would you compare 
uh, Google AdWords, for example, or YouTube advertising to what's happening right now today in the 21st century this year uh, with Facebook uh, in terms of cost, uh, hassles, uh, what works, what doesn't. What, what are your thoughts on, on some of these other mediums? Well, they all have their, their place to be used. One of the big differences between Facebook advertising and let's say advertising on Google or Bing or something like that, or even YouTube for that matter, because Google owns YouTube, um, is the intention of the uh, person doing the searching. Or let's say if you're on Google and you're searching for something like uh, you want to, you know, uh, buy a new sweater, you're you might be searching for um, best sweater prices or uh, where can I buy a cashmere sweater for under $50 or something like that. You, you have an exact idea of what you want and the, the ads that are going to be served up to you are based on those keywords that the advertiser put in. So that kind of intention of the person is different than with on Facebook. You're coming at it from a different approach, meaning you're saying who is a person most likely to want my product or service and you're putting your offer in front of them, they're not searching for you. In other words, on Facebook, on Google, they're searching for you. So it's a different um, type of way to get to your people. Uh, Facebook is more conversational and friendly and people go there to, to feel good. Um, they want, as a matter of fact, if as an advertiser, if you actually write copy that makes people feel bad, they will reject your ad. So you can't do an ad on Facebook, such as like if you're in the nutrition space, you can't write an ad that says, um, are you tired of feeling fat? They will, they won't allow it because they'll, they'll come back and say, you make people feel bad when you say that. So you're not allowed to do those kind of ads. Um, on Google, I don't know what their policy is right now on that, but you could, you know, you could see ads in the past that would say something like tired of feeling fat because someone says, types in how do I how do I lose weight how can I lose 10 pounds in, in two days they've actually typed that in <laughs> so you're going to get those kind of an ad you know those kind of ads um, and YouTube is this, since it uses the same platform as Google they also have the same type of intention um, your users are going to be in YouTube typing um, you know, how to lose weight fast so they're actually giving you the input. Your, your person that you're trying to reach is giving you those inputs, whereas on Facebook, you're actually determining up front, like, who do I want to reach? You're building that idea, and you're targeting them versus them searching. So those are the, the differences there, and they, they both have their place. Um, I, lo I personally love Facebook because of the fact that you can target the people most likely to want your products and services, and you can – you can speak to them, and if you're if you're good at it, if you can write great copy, and you can speak right to the heart of the thing that's bothering them the most, their problem. I mean, it's simple. It, advertising is not that complex. Technically, it can be on some of these platforms, but the overall um, way you approach it is: look, these people in a within a certain group with a certain industry have a problem and we've identified whatever the problem is and you are offering their solution and you're putting the solution in front of them mm -hmm. and saying, here, take it, take my solution. If you do it right and you have all the steps in place, it should work just fine. You, you know, you don't, you don't want to, you know, sell the ice cubes to the Eskimos. They don't want them, but offer the solutions. Exactly. So it makes sense to do that. Right. Right. Well, that makes a whole lot of sense. So, Again, just going back to what you just said, I've I've heard uh, a lot about people um, being able to find the right people who will respond to their ads. So, so talk further, if you would, a little bit about about how that works. You have described it uh, in several different contexts, and uh, and even people can kind of get weird about well, what does an avatar mean, and what what am I talking about? Um, you know, uh, again, business owners are experts at what they do and not necessarily uh -huh. expert on all the lingo and, and terminology 
that, right. market, that marketing people uh, like we do. Yes. So, uh, someone wants to know, well, well, all right, clarify for me again, how do I find the right people who are going to respond to my ads on Facebook? So um, it's the targeting and it is defining if I can uh, try to, it's hard to, as a marketer sometimes to forget what you know so that you can speak <laughs> really well to that because it's just so something I do all the time, but it's we very don't, important. Uh, we I'm don't, so glad you asked that. I'm so glad you did. We don't speak of your language. <laughs> yes. Yes. But it's important for clarity to do that, um, to kind of back up and say, um, you know, the person who is most likely to want your product or service, you know, if you're selling something, let's say um, a supplemental insurance policy for someone over 60, mm -hmm. right? Um, that's a product and someone may need that. Well, we, we, the easy parts are we know what age they are. We're not going to market this to someone who's 22 years old. Mm -hmm. So when, as you start to build your avatar, meaning the person, the ideal person, just the word we use to describe them, the first thing is, is their age. We say they're 60 or older. Um, maybe in your business, you happen to know, based on your own business statistics, when you look in, you see, you know, most of the people that are responding to me are men. Uh, they're the ones doing it. If you know that, then you could say, okay, we're going to go after men. We're going to go after over 60 and we're going to go for men. And then we say, um, uh, maybe they are not working now. They're, they're, they're not currently employed. They have stated a status as retired, let's say. So that'd be another status. You could say, we're going after men who are over 60 who are retired. Uh, and maybe you know that the people that bought your supplemental policy before have um, made a certain amount of money are in a certain income bracket. That's another data set that Facebook has access to. So now we've got four things. Um, maybe you also know that they um, are members of AARP. You, you happen to find out that a lot of your members are, are that. That's a fifth set. So as you can see, we can go on and on, and you can keep get and you want to go on and on. You want to get as deep as you can and say, what else do I know about these people? Um, maybe you know a certain um, television shows that they watch. That's always a good one. Or maybe they subscribe to a certain magazines. Those are really good as well. Um, they're part of different organizations. Maybe they're uh, part of their local, I don't know, Lions Club or some some type of something that you can identify. And it doesn't mean they all are, but it means that a lot of them are. You want to, you know, go like say. 75, 80%, I mean, get as close as you can that, that they're going to be all these things. And then that's how you can get into the Facebook targeting and put, you know, you don't know individually who these people are, but you're, you're picking that targeting and you're saying, okay, we're going to go after men. We're going to go after over 60. We're going to go after their in AARP. And then you've built this kind of ideal audience. And that's who you put your message in front of. Is that is that clear? Is that making sense? Yeah, I, that, uh, yeah. I'm trying to lose my marketing head for a minute. And that, <laughs> yeah, that that that, uh, that definitely helps out. And so, my pen just fell apart. Look at that. <laughs> <laughs> no problem. No worries. So, uh, I, I shouldn't be tapping it on my desk like Johnny Carson or something. Mm. So, uh, all right. Now, I understand that Facebook owns Instagram. Is that right? That's correct. And so is there a way to replicate or repeat your message in two different locations? Absolutely. So when you are creating Facebook ads, um, one of the things that they will offer you is the placement. So not only do you have the targeting, but then we have to talk about placement. And there are many new placements on Facebook right now. So your ones that people are familiar with are usually in your newsfeed, that thing that you scroll um, that's called the newsfeed in Facebook. 
people will place ads there and the way you can tell if you've seen an ad is it'll have up on the top it'll say sponsored by and it'll have a, a little their little icon for their page so to say sponsored by that's how you know you're looking at ads sometimes people are very clever and they they make the copy such that they didn't even realize that they were looking at an ad others are very blatant and you know it's an ad the other place you see ads are on the right side so they're called right side ads and they're just they're sitting there little squares and sometimes they're little videos or they're little, you know, buy me kind of thing. Um, there are other places. The th third big place is Instagram. So when you create your ad, um, Facebook gives you the ability to see how it will look on each one of these platforms. So you can create it and then scroll through and say, how does it look on the newsfeed? How does it look on the right side? How will it look on Instagram? Um, how will it look maybe if you're doing a messenger ad? That's a whole other, we won't even get into that today. Um, but that's big coming up for 2018. I mean, people are using it now. I use it now, but it's becoming more and more prevalent. Just remember, mess messenger ads. Um, so there's some some little bit of limitations with uh, Instagram. If you have a static picture and you want to use that for an ad, that's fine. You can also run videos and video ads are great on Facebook. So you can really get your message across about what your you know, product or service or what have you. Um, but if you're going to run that on Instagram, it has to be 60 seconds or less for mm -hmm. a video. And that video will also show up on Instagram. So it's just another way to get in front of, a, you know, another group of people. Some people are on Instagram a lot more than, than maybe they're on Facebook, depending on their demographic. Yeah. So, so speaking of which, I was watching the uh, HGTV network, watching people buy houses, and uh, one of these buyers of a house happened to have uh, a, a Facebook uh, a page for her cats, and she had she had twenty two thousand likes for her cat pictures. Yes. So uh, anyway, there are some some things that don't necessarily translate into making money for your business. Um, but I'm sure I had a question in there somewhere in the midst of holding my broken pen. Uh, but <laughs> well, I'll just say even, I mean, this is actually good that you brought this up because the fact is that pets, cats, dogs, horses, um, probably salamanders, the parrots, whatever, people that own those type of, of animals and i'm i'm a huge animal lover i love all animals uh, but that's a when you can find a niche on facebook that's a, a people are passionate about like really crazy passionate um you can target those people so if you had let's say a pet product maybe you uh, have some kind of a uh, i've seen a lot of these led dog collars they're really cool i only get one for my dog but they're like the the they light up you know really cool at nighttime and they give them a little spotlight Let's say you had a product like that. You could put that product right in front of people who love dogs because not only do you have the ability to, to target people who love dogs, you can go by breed. You can go by um, people who are likely to make an online purchase as a targeting function on Facebook. I mean, there's so much stuff. Um, so don't laugh at the cat videos because if people like, you know, yeah. cat videos, that, that's something of targeting that you can do. Um, people who like those pages on Facebook, you can pretty much know that they're cat lovers, right? So if you were maybe a veterinarian in that person's area, you could put an ad that you're a veterinarian and do you, do you, you could, your ad could be, do you have a cat? Well, of course they do. You know that as an advertiser because you're targeting them that way and you just reach out right to them and speak that way. So See, I was, cool. I was secretly asking a brilliant question that I didn't even know what I was doing. <laughs> Beautiful. Uh, so, uh, which reminds me, you were talking about video on both uh, Instagram, which can be no longer than 60 seconds, but also a Facebook video. And uh, if you would touch on the fact, and uh, this is even more true today, that people want authenticity. And mm -hmm. so it doesn't, it's even worse to have an over, overproduced professional video than exactly. having something that you can shoot off your iPhone. Is that right? It, it's true. I mean, it, now, it doesn't mean that professionally done videos are, are 
you know, not good because they are. I've seen some amazing ones. I mean, absolutely amazing. But when you want to do the get someone to know, like, and trust you really fast, shooting a video with your iPhone and just speaking directly to your audience about their passion or the solution that you have. I mean, it's just brilliant because your trust level goes up so much higher. It's not even, it's, people aren't thinking it, they're feeling it. And the feelings that are coming across come across so much faster through video. You know how it is. You can, you can meet someone and you just kind of, you either like really, you get a vibe with them or you say your body kind of says Some, something's wrong. You maybe can't put your finger on it, but you're like, no, I don't want to, this person stay away from them. They're just not, it's not there. The same thing happens with video. You can connect that way. So it is a great way. And I encourage whenever I have clients, I'm like, what can we do on video? Especially if they're selling a service that is going to be involving them. Let's say if they're a dentist or a chiropractor, um, you know, something like that where people need to, to connect with them, they're going to see the video, see the person's face and ah, I like that guy, you know, I like that <laughs> Dave Henning. He's pretty cool. I think I'm going to reach out. I want to get some of his coaching. He's, he's the guy for me. Yeah. So, and speaking of, of quality of video, um, would it be fair to say that people need to give themselves permission to not be perfect and to make mistakes and to not procrastinate and take one, take two, take three. Oh, this has got to be absolutely perfect. Uh, because it also humanizes someone when you see, when they allow, yeah. allow you to see their flaws. So it, re it reminds me of the, <laughs> of the door to door Bible, Bible salesman who won the annual award of all the, it used to be a big deal to sell, books door to door and encyclopedias door to door young people would probably have no clue what i'm talking about but he won the award and he had a t tremendous problem with stuttering mm. and so when he got his award at the annual convention the president of the com company says we want you to share with our fellow uh door to door bible salesman how did you win this uh, award and and he he said well i i i'd uh I'd ask them if they wanted a Bible or did they, they want me to read it to them. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he sold boy. a lot of Bibles. <laughs> I know. And I apologize to all my friends who stutter. My, my older brother had a serious challenge with that in his younger years. So my apologies, please don't take offense. I love you. <laughs> We're not making people fun of people who stutter. Absolutely it's just not. a never story. Yes. So, so anyway, Diane, thank you so much for being with us today. Again, I encourage people to go to your website and, and uh, give us your website one more time, Diane. And we want to make sure that that's clear. I, I highly recommend that you at least uh, give Diane a call and uh, set up an appointment for her discovery call. Why not? You've got, as someone once said, if you've got nothing to lose and everything to gain simply by trying, then why not try? Thanks. Well said. Yes. Uh, my website is uh, www.clientgiants, with an S on the end, clientgiants.com. And you can go there and just um, connect with me, send me an email, or sign up for a discovery call. I do them um, always on video, and I, I, I only like to be in a situation where it's a win-win. I really do mean that, and you can uh, ask any of my clients that. Um, I. I won't even take on a client if I don't think I can make a win for them. I don't want to. I want to uh, just have that winning mentality all around. If it's not a win-win and someone's not going to win, I don't want to be part of it. So that's kind of my philosophy. That's, that's fantastic. So any final words on people thinking about, about using Facebook? Yeah, Before just, uh, you know, be careful out there. Uh, there are a lot of, uh, places where you can go get free information about, you know, how to, how to do things with Facebook ads. Um, the thing that I found is a lot of people are very uh, certain that this is the way you must do it this way. The thing is just with any learning, there are lots of different ways. There are many ways. Um, people say there's more than way, one way to skin a cat. And I, I'm like said, I was an animal lover. So I say, 
there's, there's different ways to free a bird from a cage. So go out and find the information. There's some, I mean, with YouTube, I mean, you've got a lot of different options, but just collect a lot of information from a lot of different voices. And um, that, that's the best way that I found um, to really be able to put it all together and to connect some of these dots and go, okay, I'm, I'm starting to understand now how this is all coming together. Well, and, and to that point, Diane, um, Facebook is evolving. It's changing. So you can't, oh. let, you can't really to, like go to one guru expert that says, yep. Hey, here's one, two, three, four, boom, it's going to work. That's just not yep. true. Um, so you've got to be open-minded and understand, understand the pluses and the minuses of, uh, and go with what's totally current. And, and of course the challenge there is, is how do you know what's totally current with Facebook? That's why they need to, to call you up and to have a free discovery call. So, uh, thank you so much, Diane. Well, I'm talking with Diane Zidick, the owner of client giants. She is a Facebook expert and very willing to, to let you know whether it makes sense for you or not. Boy, what a fair idea to have to say, let's have a discovery call. Let's talk. Let's see if this is going to make sense for you, if we're a good fit to work together, and, uh, and, and go from there. Having said that, I want to wrap up with, with my, uh, <laughs> with my uh, uh, little book here. You're going to get this free book just by going to DaveHenningCoaching.com. I want to give this to you as a gift for watching today's podcast. This legendary marketer, I'm going to block my face here, my, my friend David Sharp, how to build a digital marketing business and earn unlimited in income from anywhere in the world. And if you go to that website, DaveHenningCoaching.com, there's also a couple of bonuses built in. I'm not going to even tell you what they are. You need to go there. Check it out, watch Dave's little video, and read the page. It's very well laid out of everything that's included in this book. And once you order, you can actually download the PDF of the entire book while you're waiting for your book to arrive. So there you go, a free gift. Thank you so much for being with us today. And Diane, I really appreciate our time together. So let's go out there and okay. make good things happen for our friends in business, shall we? Yes, we will. All Thank right, everybody. Really appreciate Thanks. It. All right, great. Have a great day. Thank you.